In this video, we are going to implement the post image preview feature. So basically, when the user clicks on the choose image button and then select an image, the preview of the image is going to be displayed on the button. And of course, if they change their mind, they can click on the image and they will be able to choose another image to replace it with. Okay, so that's what we are going to be doing in this video. Now, I have already written the HTML for this choose image button. So let us open our create.html inside the post folder. And then we scroll down to where we have uh, the post details. So this is the HTML for the button. And right next to that button, we have a file input to which we have given it a class of hide. And that is why we do not see it on our form. Now, if we remove the hide class and then we refresh our form, you're going to see that file input. Now, it is this file input that brings up our file our manager or our, our directory or our computer directory for us to choose a file. The button on its own cannot do such thing. So, the browser only uses the file input to bring up the file directory. Okay, so, but on the finished project, we are using the choose image button to bring that up. Now, what happens is, we have hidden the file input. And when the user clicks on the button, since the button on its own cannot bring up that file or manager, we are using JavaScript to trigger a click event on the hidden file input. So it is the file input that brings up the file uh, directory instead of the button itself. All right, so this is going to make more sense as we implement. So let us go to the code. I'm going to hide our file input back. And then all of this is going to be done with JavaScript. So I will create a script tag at the bottom of the page here. And I'm just going to indicate here that this is these are the styles for preview post image. And the first thing we're going to select is the image button because that's the button on which we want to attach a click event listener so that when the user clicks on it, we can proceed to show the file or we can proceed to trigger a click event on the file input, which will then show us the file manager. So let us select our image button. The next element we are going to select is the image input itself. That is the file input. So let us grab its own class. So the class we gave it is image input. So I will copy that and paste it in the query selector function okay so we have selected the two uh, elements now we will add an event listener on the image button so we will listen for the click event and when the user clicks on that button this function is going to execute okay let us make sure that it's working and yes it is so now if we want our computer directory to pop up after this click what we are going to do in this event handler is we are going to programmatically trigger a click event on the image input okay so we execute the click method on the image input and it will be the same as the user actually clicking on the file input and we all know when you click on the file input that our uh, file directory or the computer directory is going to pop up so let us just make make sure this is working and sure enough it is okay so that is that um the next step is to make sure we read the file and then display it on the button so in order to do this, we are going to um, listen for an event on the image input. So we'll add an event listener. This time we are listening for the change event. 
because that is the event that gets triggered on a file input when the user has selected a file. So when you select a file in your computer directory, uh, the image input on which you clicked is going to trigger a change event. So the event that the function that handles this event is this function. And what we want it to do is, first of all, let us uh, inspect the file that got selected. It will be possible to inspect the file um, using the very input element itself. So it is going to have a files uh, property. And this, this files property is an array of all the files that were selected in the event. Now for this particular case, we only had one file and an array of one element will have that element in the first index. So we'll specify zero here to pluck out that particular file from the array. Okay, so let us refresh and we open our console to see the value that gets locked on our console. We are going to click and then we select an image and we will see a console log here when we select it. So the load event is working. And if we expand, we are going to see all the details uh, about the file that got selected, like the size, the name, the last modified and so on. So it is this information that is going to help us to display a preview of that image on our browser. Okay, so let us go ahead. Uh, what I'm going to do is to make this uh, variable easier to deal with, I'm just going to assign it to a variable called file. And then we can now be using file instead since it is uh, more concise. So before we go ahead and attempt to uh, display the preview for a file, we need to make sure that file exists. So we'll put an if statement and check that the file exists. And then if it does, we will then use a feature of JavaScript called the file reader. It's basically an API of the browser. So it lets our code uh, communicate with the browser. So this is an instance of the file reader class. Now this file reader class also listens for an onload event uh, on the page. And when that event occurs, we can define a, fu a function that should get executed. And that function will take in the event. Okay, and then if we want to display um, the file that or the image that got selected, we are going to uh, invoke a method on this reader object called uh, read data as the URL. And we are going to be passing the file in that URL. So we'll pass the file as the as, as a parameter to this read as URL. And then here we are going to provide a sort of configurations for the file. So we're going to make sure that this file, that file appears on the image button. So we're going to say image that star that background image. And then we will set it to URL. And then within here we have the path to the image. So this is the same way that that we usually do image image backgrounds in CSS. If this was CSS, we will just go to the selector for image button and then do something like um, background image. And then we'll use URL and provide path path to the image. But this is JavaScript and since it is JavaScript, we make sure we use camel case instead of dashes. And then since the uh, URL is going to be in a variable, we are using backticks so that we can insert that variable here. And that variable is going to come from the event. So e.target.result. 
okay so that's the url to the temporary image that we are going to preview if you go to our browser and then we click and select our image you will notice that the image is already being displayed but uh, it is not having the right dimensions so let us add a few style properties okay so we are going to uh, add some style properties on the image again the first of them being the height remember we gave um, the button the same height as the input elements so that they can be uniform but now when we are adding our image we obviously want to increase the height of the button so we will set it to 150 pixels and then we will also remove this border this dashed border so we'll just let me just duplicate this and the css property we want to change is the border we'll set the value to none and now let us try it out again on our browser we choose an image and the image is being displayed but the size is not correct okay so um, in order to fix this we are going to set the background size to cover so that it just fits in with the size of the uh, div or the, the button and we are going to be using background image repeatedly across the website so i am also going to create a default star or a default class called um, bg image a background image uh, i don't know if i already defined this let me just search in our css file uh, no i haven't yet defined it so let us scroll up to the default section and then at the bottom here we're going to define a new class for bg image and we'll set background uh, size to cover and then we'll just set background repeat to uh, no repeat and then we'll set uh, background position oops background position to center okay so with this let us try again click on choose image we select our image and now it is displaying the uh, correct size but we can still see the, the text on the image it still says choose image and even though it is appropriate because you can still choose image by clicking on it i think um, it doesn't really look good on top of the image so i'm just going to hide this okay so um i'm going to give i'm going to give this pan element um, to which the choose image text is is uh, is inside i'm going to give it a class i'm just going to say choose image uh, label because it's the label of the button and then we are going to select this in our javascript And while we are displaying the image, we will be hiding. We'll be hiding this choose image uh, label. Okay, so let's try this again. When we choose our image, the text on the image is no longer there, and of course, the user can still click on the image and select another one. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is um, you can actually read more about this file reader class. So if you can go to Google and just type uh, file reader MDN, you're going to see a complete documentation of all the features of uh, file reader. And when you do that, it's going to uh, aid your understanding of what we just implemented here. Okay, so that's it about our feature for post or preview on our create post form. So in the next video, we are going to be looking at um, the design for our buttons.